Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back in the Midwest US just for a little short amount of time before I return to Southwest Florida. And I'm anxious to get back because I got up this morning and, uh, and it was sleeting outside. So a little bit chilly, not quite uh, what I was hoping for, but you know, it's okay. I'll be back in Southwest Florida with my orchids in the warm weather pretty quickly. Um, but what I wanted to talk with you today about is uh, orchid breeding and crossing and uh, share with you uh, what I think about and what I do before I actually make my crosses. So I'm mostly into Cattleyas and Cattleya crossing and I haven't been doing this for too long and as I think you know it takes a long time to see an orchid flower from seed anywhere from on the in the quickest and the fastest uh, situations it's two and a half years uh, mostly it's three and a half years to five years to even sometimes seven years so it takes a while to see this so because I haven't been doing this for that long I don't have a lot of personal experience in the crosses that I make and what they're going to look like but fortunately um, a lot of the information uh, on what crosses have been made, uh, what those flowers look like, uh, both the parents and the progeny is available. So uh, what we're going to do is take a look at orchidroots.com where you can see a lot of that information is there. You can get information also on um, if the plant that you're considering crossing and using is a good parent, either male or female, and you can get an idea of traits and characteristics that may be passed on from the parent plant to the progeny plants. All right, what do I look for when I'm breeding my orchids, when I'm doing crosses? Well, uh, what with, with cattleyas as well as most, most orchids, it's all about the flower. So that's the main thing that you look for. Number one is flower. And what flower means, it's, it's size, um, coloration, flaring, spotting, mixtures, how big the flower is. Uh, all those are considered when, the, 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 that's the primary thing that you look at when breeding orchids. One of the other things that I, that I put in the pot, put in the mix, is fragrance. I really like to mix various types of orchid fragrances. Now that's not going to be, you can't find information about that online, but I just assume that if I have two parents and both of them are fragrant, that I'm going to get some fragrance from the flowers of the project. It's not guaranteed. Uh, the genetics of fragrance is just really um, really confusing. And so I, but you just assume when there's going to be some there, when there's fragrance of the parents, you're going to get that same thing in the progeny. The other thing that I look for that I consider when I'm breeding is the general vigor of the plant. Um, you know, if you have a plant that's uh, vigorous and nice and grows under those certain conditions, I'd like to use that. I'd like using that vigor and growth ability in my situations. You know, if I have a plant that doesn't do well in my conditions, I'm not going to use that in my in my breeding program. I'm not going to try to incorporate the, those traits and characteristics. And, and so that's the other thing that I look at uh, pretty carefully. You can also look at, at flowering time, um, whether the plant will bloom one time a year or multiple, flower, multiple times a year. And again, the more vigorous plants tend to bloom more often, but, but not necessarily, that's not necessarily uh, the case. Um, you take a look at growth habit. I don't like growing big cattleyas. I've got a lot of friends that have these just huge plants and because my yard and my orchid growing space is so small in southwest Florida, I can't afford the big plants. So I don't use those in my in my breeding programs and I consider the overall shape and size of the plant uh, as well. All right, so those are some of the characteristics um, that I look for and uh, what I want to do is um, break from this and I'm going to show you how what I look for um, and, and what I look at when I'm before I'm making crosses. Before I do that, I have one other small thing that I want to share, you and share with you. And so I've shared some videos with you pretty recently about attending orchid shows, uh, local orchid shows in my community. And what I do during those shows 
is I go around, I look at the flowers, I smell them, and I go, oh, isn't this nice? But I also, what I do, and I don't think that many other people do this, is I look at the orchids and I, I just go around carefully and look at the flowers that, and, I, and, and smell the flowers, and I think to myself, is this a flower I want to use in my breeding program? Is this something I want to use? And what I did at the last two shows that I went to is I found a few flowers that were really striking to me, that had some really unique characteristics and traits that I wanted to use. I found the owner of those flowers and then asked them if, if I could harvest, at the end of the show, if I could harvest the pollinia, collect the pollen from a few of those flowers and use those. And what I, what I do also is I get their name and contact information and I promise to share with them, with them the progeny, if I generate any, from some of their plants. So I want to show you some of those as well. So I'm the guy at the end of the orchid show who's walking around with breeding glasses on and I got a um, I got a, a, a box with small test tubes, microfuge tubes in there in a forceps and I'm writing, taking pictures, writing all the information down, collecting pollinia at the end of the show from people, from plants, from people that I have permission to collect pollinia from. You have to get permission from the people and right now they trust me and they know me, uh, most of these people. And I paid off. I actually have given back a lot of plants, seedlings, to the people that have provided pollinia to me so that I could use them in my crosses. All right, so with that, what I want to do is take a look at the some of the flowers that I've collected pollinia from at shows. And then I want to share with you uh, the flowers. And what I do is I essentially put flowers side by side up on my screen and try to imagine in my head what the progeny, what the cross is going to look like. But to start, I'm going to give you a little background information. We're going to go to Orchid Roots, take a look at some flowers, some crosses, and I'll share with you again some of the process of deciding which orchids to cross. Okay, and we're back. So this is at the top of the screen, I hope you can see it. This is orchidroots.com. And I use this website a lot in order to um, take a look at the various orchids and background and information and crosses and things like that. And first of all, I use this because I don't like to remake crosses that other people have made. So this shows you whether certain crosses has been ma have been made. It shows you what the parents look like and it gives you a lot of information about that. Before we get into that, I have to, I do want to uh, before that, I want to share with you some of the flowers uh, that I have, where I've collected pollinia from at the meeting. So this first one, this really nice yellow, is uh, I got this uh, from one of the vendors at the Naples Orchid Society show in Naples. And this was not really an award winner at the show. But it was a really nice flower, and I talked to the vendor, and he, he really liked the flower because of the number of flowers that are on the plant, because of the brightness of the yellow coloration on this. And I've actually used this successfully in some crosses that are still coming. So the, um, the capsules are growing, and it's interesting. I think I crossed this onto a, a large, and it's not, this is not a big flower, uh, but I crossed this onto a large flared uh, red cattleya. So I'm curious to see what happens with that. And again, he likes it because of the striking coloration, because of the number of buds per spike. Um, this one, this next flower right here, was an awarded, uh, was a recently awarded uh, orchid cattleya that was, um, that was at the Gulf Coast Orchid Alliance show in sale. And so um, I've collected from this grower before, and she's very generous, she's very nice. I've returned some plants to her, and um, I'm just happy to try this. And I, I have tried this recently with uh, some with a, just one cross uh, that I've used. Again, uh, this was awarded. There are lots of flowers per spike, and it's just a nice, vigorous plant. And she lives within a mile from my house, so it'll grow in my area. The last one that I'm most excited about is right here, and uh, this is just this is a striking flower and I collected the pollinia 
from a couple of flowers and I've already used it up. Uh, I really like this flower. I might have to, I might have to get this. Uh, this is from uh, Florida Sun Coast Orchids. Uh, it's from the breeding program there, and I just uh, the spotting on this. And this is this. Um, I don't know if the color will stand true in the video, but there is. This is kind of a greenish yellowish uh, color on the petals and sepals but really nice purple spotting. And this is just a striking flower that was awarded. So I really, um, I really like this flower. Okay, so what I wanna do is we'll want to kind of shift gears a little bit and take a look. Oh, and I should also say, before I shift gears, I put, I collect images of all of my orchid flowers here. And so this one right here is candy corn star of Hamana. And I collect images of the flower, nice images of the flower, but I also collect flowering dates. So I know when this thing flowers, I know if it's a repeat bloomer. And I go, in this case, this is from my uh, newest to my oldest. So if we go further down on the list, what we're gonna find is some that have been blooming, um, you know, really over the years and let's see if we can go down so I'm probably making everyone uh, a little dizzy uh, but then well here's here's one that I like amazing Thailand it's bloomed a couple of times uh, within the past year as we move on um, this is a no, I don't want to go here um, so there, any, anyway, there's, there's another one right here. This blooms in December, this plant. Tainan Gold Golden Oriole blooms in December of every year. Uh, here's Cornelia Kalapana, one of my favorites. And this blooms multiple times a year uh, right here. And I like keeping records of that if I don't remember. It, 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 it's kind of an indicator of when these plants bloom and how vigorous they are. And I just like to have this information for my own records. Okay, let's go to Orchid Roots. And this is the Orchid Roots site right here. And this provides a lot of information on orchids and backgrounds and crossing and everything like that. So you, and this is pretty up to date. So you can do a search, for example, the first one that we wanna look at. I had uh, Ports of Paradise bloom pretty recently for me and I wanted to make a cross on it. So this is Ports of Paradise uh, right here and I don't know whether you can see this or if it'll be too small for your screen but I'm going to click on it and then at the top of this you can have their various people that contribute uh, images of their flowers. So in some cases they're, they look pretty uniform. You can see a little bit of diversity here, but for the most part, uh, they look pretty good. If you go down on the page, you can see the parents of the orchid in question that we searched for. So this is um, Rinko Leleo Catlea, RLC for Fortune. And then the parents, so this is 50% um, uh, Rinko Lelia Digbiana. So that's what gives rise. You can see hopefully the, how frilly the lip is on this. And that's what gives rise to this really ruffled lip that you can see in all of the Ports of Paradise. All right, so you can get the background on the plant, you can see what, con what was contributed by both parent, but the interesting thing is this orchid is pretty green. And the cultivar that I have is called Emerald Isle, which is shown right here. So sometimes the cultivar will be included, and that's the name that's in single quotes uh, at the end of the name. Now, these images are contributed by various members of Orchid Roots. I've contributed images of my flowers, and sometimes people don't put the cultivar uh, in there. But uh, anyway, you can see what this is. Now, what I'd like to do is go through right here. You may not be able to see it. There's a um, there's a tab that says or it says immediate offspring. So you can click on this and then go to the immediate offspring of Ports of Paradise. And what you can see from here as I go through this list is Ports of Paradise is a very good parent. Uh, but let's take a look at some of them. Oh, and then you can go through here. And again, I don't know whether you can see it. So here's a Rinko Brassolea. Celine Chu, and this number, if you can see it, says 16. Now, what that means 
is that this is a cross between Ports of Paradise and Brassabola and Adosa. And there are 16 images of the progeny and what they look like. And a lot of these, there are no images associated with that. But let's take a look on this and what there's gonna be is 16 images. Uh, here there's only 11, but you can click more on the bottom here and see more images. But you can see what, ha what the progeny of this are gonna look like. So in this case, from this cross, as you can see, the characteristics of the Nidosa, of the Brassavola and Nidosa shown here at the bottom right are the dominant characteristics and trait trait for these progeny. Or these flowers are probably a little bit bigger than the dosa because Ports of Paradise is so big, but you can get an idea of genetics and, and what is dominant and what traits are gonna override when you do this. Now you could keep on looking at immediate offspring, but I don't wanna do that. Let's look up a little bit more here and we'll see Here's, here's another one that has some uh, pictures associated with it. And what you can see is that here's Ports of Paradise on the bottom left, there's a parent, and here's a Cattleya Moscomb that is the other parent. And then you can see the true hybrid nature of these progeny flowers right here. Um, now the thing is you can see the, the characteristics and the trait of the, again, the green from the Ports of Paradise, the large flower, the frilly, uh, lip, but then you can also see some characteristics of the other plant. If we go back and then take a look at some other progeny, here's one. All right, I'm not, no, we don't want to look at, this is fringe benefits, which I'm sure is going to be, this is a back cross to a Digbiana. You can see how, how the the lip, there's, it's a little bit more uh, frilly and lace-like because it is a back cross. This is 75% dig beyond right here but you can see what these um, what the crosses are going to look like if we go on a little bit more here's another um, cross with of um, ports of paradise with uh, Aaron uh, Kobayashi and you can see the characteristics and the traits and it's mostly in this case it looks mostly like ports of paradise but there is some yellow coloration now the thing is when you see this, you don't know exactly what the parent is. Sometimes there's gonna be variation in what the parent looks like. So you can't tell that, but you can get an idea, a general idea of what these uh, orchids are gonna look like and what the characteristics and traits are gonna be. Another situation where you can see what happened is the green in the Ports of Paradise uh, really um, were dominant in the case of this cross. You have a little bit of the red uh, coloration in the lip coming from the pollen parent. Um, I should back up a little bit and say also what happens when you when you list your crosses, the uh, seed donor is listed first. So in these cases, Ports of Paradise times Brassable and Adosa. The Adosa was the Polynia contributor in this case. And you go further down the list, right here things shift, whereas here in this case, uh, Calia bicolor was the seed donor and Ports of Paradise was the pollen donor, the Polynia donor. So you can see, um, again, it's either a good seed or pollen donor with Ports of Paradise. And so it, and it, it's gonna cross really well. And I use this when I make crosses and I look at this and I try to figure out, I try not to make a cross that somebody else has already made. Um, I, I don't always do this, but I try to make new crosses that I can then call unique and I can name as I like. Okay, let's go and look at a few more things. And let's take a look at uh, Burana Beauty. Okay, so here we are on Burana Beauty, and sometimes there's a Dendrobium Burana Beauty, and we don't want that, uh, but we want, there's a uh, Ring Catlianthi uh, Burana Beauty. So this is another plant that I have that I really like that I use a lot in, in crosses. Uh, this is an older cross. This was uh, registered in 1996. So a little bit of an older cross. And you can see some variation here. So um, the one that I have, I don't think is listed here. Oh, here it is. It's Burana Beauty Burana. 
uh, that's listed right here, but you can see there's some variation in the cross. Um, what then you do is you go at the top and you look for immediate offspring. So again, this is a little bit of an older cross, and what you can see is that it's both a not as good maybe as Ports of Paradise, but it's a decent um, both um, seed parent and pollinia parent shown right here. So you can take a look if you want at some of the characteristics of the progeny. So this is uh, Burana Angel, and this was a red, bright angel crossed with Burana Beauty. And you can see in this case, the red coloration is what really is, is striking in the progeny plants. If we go back and maybe take a look at another, uh, another plant, let's see if there's anything interesting here. I don't know. Okay, here's, here's uh, Toshi Aoki, which is another flared yellow cattleya, and you expect two flared cattleyas crossed together, you're going to get flaring, and that's, that's pretty much what happens. Uh, the Toshi Aoki is a little bit of a bigger flower, but you can see you have, um, you know, flaring, really striking. Um, some of these flowers are really striking. So that's in general, you can take a look at your your cross, you know, what Burana Beauty has been used for, what the characteristics are, and what things are going to look like. Let's take a look at a few more, and let's go to Golf Green. Okay, and we're here at Golf Green, and so this is Rinko uh, Leleo Calia Golf Green right here, and uh, there are, well, I should say, you look over here, there are 14 images of golf green and this was a um, this was a hybrid that was registered in 2006 so it's close to 20 years old and so um, this plant is people really love these we had I think we had four of these at the last orchid show that I went to a lot of people have them they're pretty um, they're pretty common uh, hair pig is the cultivar for for these I actually have one of these that hasn't bloomed yet um, but you can you can kind of see um, you know see this plant and how beautiful the flowers are and what it looks like and this is as you might imagine this is a Digbiana crossed um, and this is just a really nice beautiful flower mine's a little slow growing but what I wanted to show you is this thing was uh, registered in 2006 if we take a look at immediate offspring all we have is one that's listed and let's click on that offspring just to see. And there's no pictures of the parent. There are also no pictures of the offspring. And this was this was um, uh, registered in 2020, but there's no images here. So what this suggests to me is that golf green, in spite of how beautiful the plant is, um, this is not a good parent. And this is not. This is something that I have. I like it but I don't, it's just not going to be a very good parent. When I first checked this a few years ago, there were no progeny plants listed in spite of the age of the plant. So that, that clearly is an indicator that how beautiful this plant is and how common this plant is, it's clearly an indicator that this is not a good parent and you're going to struggle when you have this. And again, the one plant that was registered, um, it, there's no images of it. And so it, it it just doesn't look good. It's it's not going to be a good parent. Okay, let's get back to let's get back to looking at some. So I I used this um, recently because I had a Dick Smith that was blooming, and I wanted to make a cross with my Dick Smith. Okay, so let's look at look for Dick Smith, and here's a if you click on Dick Smith, it'll take you to the next page and what you can see is variation in the um, in the Dick Smith that people have. So this is a cross between uh, Hisako Akazuka and Hawaiian Hawaiian Lightning. So this is a flared Cattleya with a looks like a solid color Cattleya and, and what it does is it gives you of flared Cattleyas with really a range of colors. So the progeny that you're going to get from this, it depends on what which of these parents were used, and some of them are striking. I have Dick Smith Paradise. It's it's the most common thing, uh, and my Dick Smith is right here. So my Dick Smith looks. Um, 
it should look pretty similar. It's a clone. It's the same plant, and it should look similar uh, to this D Dick Smith Paradise and this Dick Smith Paradise. And, and in reality, it does. And there you're going to have some differences depending on the lighting and the camera and things like that. But when you take a look at this Dick Smith and go to Immediate Offspring, you can see that there's, and this was registered in uh, 2006. So also a little while ago, but you can see that it has been used and generated a lot of progeny either as the uh, seed donor on the top here or on the bottom here as the pollinia donor. And so I look at these and it's like, okay, do I want to use these? So I actually have uh, pollinia from this parent right here. I have pollinia from uh, Toshi Aoki. And I want to show you this because this is um, Kyla Kobayashi. And there's only one image of this. Here's the parents of Dick Smith and Toshi Aoki. And this was the hybrid. And this actually was uploaded by um, Tristan Ingram. And this is um, YouTuber um, Ingrid Orchids and more. So uh, this was uploaded by this. I'm not sure. I can see the time, but I don't want to click on it. But let me show you. This is, this is my... Um, Kyla Kobayashi that I actually, and this is the cultivar of this one is Palmer Orchids, and this one I bought from Palmer Orchids, but I think it's another seedling that was not, not awarded and not named. And this one, the, uh, the, it didn't really uh, open at this point, um, but I do have pollinia from this. So sometimes the seedlings are going to look a little bit different, but again, you what, I'm, what I try to avoid is making um, crosses that other people have already made. So you can take a look at some of these other ones. Um, not too many, um, not too many, inter not too many images because it's a fairly recent um, orchid. Here's one that's interesting where you have a yellow hybridized with um, with the Dick Smith, and which is flared, and you got uh, a yellow. And this this you know, I'm not really sure what this means, to be honest with you. Uh, it may mean that uh, the flaring is generally tends to be a dominant trait. Um, and so it's unclear what this means until you see more of these types of plants. But you can you can see really a, um, you know, a range of things. Um, I do want to show you this one right here because this is uh, rustic spots, and this is interesting. I actually have I have this plant, and I have rustic spots in my collection. But this is interesting because you would expect to see spotting, you would expect to see flaring in the progeny, but you you don't see either. It's a beautiful flower, um, but it sometimes you can't really predict what's uh, what's going to happen. But anyway, what you try to do is make decisions on. Has this cross been made before? Is this going to be a, a good pollen donor? And then generally what I try to do is put um, images of the various plants that I'm using in my crosses up on my screen to just kind of guess what this, is, what this is going to look like. So let's say, let me go back and find... Um, Dick Smith, this is, which is right here. So this is now up on my screen. And what I'll do is I'll put these up here. I'll put uh, another one, let's say Hawaiian Prominence, and I'll put this up on my screen as well. And then I try to say, okay, what will this look like? And I know Hawaiian Prominence, the dark coloration is going to be pretty dominant in this type of cross. So I would lose my flaring. I would probably keep the yellow in the lip and obviously both of these at the, um, at the, the base are yellow in the throat and then the lip here is gonna keep that, that red coloration. Uh, you know, I did make some crosses. I like, um, I like flaring. So let's see if we go through and take a look at, here's, here's another. Uh, flaring is uh, Mackie's Flare. So what would, you know, what would this cross look like with, <laughs> okay, what would this cross look like with Dick Smith? And that's interesting. I might, I might have made this or something, something, I didn't make this, but I made something similar to this. But again, before I do this, I go and I check to see if this cross has been made before. So there's a lot of 
you know, there's a lot of homework, a lot of background information that I look for uh, before I make my crosses. I put things up, you know, because you're working with limited flowers unless you've got a plant that has, you know, like a hundred flowers on it and plenty of time and you, you want to you want to just have fun and play and see which crosses work. But that's the, uh, that's the type of thing that I look for uh, when I make my crosses. You know, do I, you know, you kind of put these on the screen. I go back and forth and decide if this, if I think this will make a good or a striking cross. And again, because of the difference, the contrasting in flaring between the petals of this orchid and then Dick Smith here on the left, this, I think this might be a really interesting outcome of this cross. All right, so that's all I have. I went on a little bit long, but I just wanted to share that information with you. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video on my long video on how I decide what um, what crosses I'm going to make. Uh, it's it's a process, but so you, what you have to remember is that you should put the homework into it because uh, it takes six months for a minimum of six months for the seed capsule to mature. Uh, what we talked about two and a half to seven years before you see a flower. So, so you wanna you wanna be a little bit um, careful and do your homework before you make a cross because each cross that you make is a commitment of time to raise an orchid plant to flower from seed. So, you know, if you're gonna go down this path, do your homework and make sure that the cross that you're making is gonna be something that you think is gonna be exciting to you and your orchid growing friends. All right, so that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, again, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.